Hello everyone and welcome to February's Witchcrafting Wednesday. Today we are going to be making this beautiful knitted goddess. So obviously today's episode is not going to be for everyone. Uh, it will be specific to people who can knit. Um, however, if you are capable of doing that, then I think you may really enjoy this project. I made this um, as well as two other knitted goddesses a few years ago now, I think three years ago, and um, I was able to make three of them in a single day, and that was also tending a child at the same time, so obviously this is not a very difficult uh, or time-consuming project. Uh, this pattern has been designed by uh, Green Woman Studios, and I am going to link to this pattern on Ravelry below. I am uh, making this project today and featuring her pattern with her full permission. However, I will not be divulging the whole pattern. It's not an expensive one. You can purchase it off of Ravelry directly using PayPal. You can also go to her Etsy shop and you can purchase the pattern there. So um, this is going to require you to uh, purchase your own copy of the pattern. But uh, like I said, it's not very expensive. Um, it does call for uh, a skein of worsted weight yarn as far as the materials are concerned. It certainly does not take up a full skein. You could probably make four, maybe even five of them with an entire skein. They, they don't take up a huge amount of yarn. Um, and I am going to be embroidering it when it's all said and done as well. Um, they do suggest that you uh, use needles to obtain um, your gauge. Obviously, you want to make this quite dense because of the, um, the fact that you'll be stuffing it. So I am going to be using 3.5 millimeter uh, double pointed needles for mine today. And um, I am also possibly going to be using this uh, 3.25 millimeter one. I think I might do it, um, use that for the arms because the arms do tend to need to be a little bit denser. You can see I have a little bit of laddering in between some of my stitches here. So I think I'm going to scale down to a 3.25 for the arms. Um, other than that, the other uh, supplies that you're going to need are going to be typical knitting notion supplies, things like scissors, uh, you're going to need darning needles, you may want to employ the use of a ruler or tape measure, um, or you may want to use uh, stitch markers, things like that. Um, you are going to need something to stuff this goddess with, and um, I would recommend a combination of um, a little uh, organza bag with the herbs and possibly crystal that you want in the actual uh, goddess. Uh, perhaps if you're going to turn it into a spell or into like a little dream pillow or an enchanted toy for a child or something like that. Um, or some type of filling like eco-fill or polyester fill or cotton. Um, I'm sure you could even use things like split peas or things like that too if you're wanting to go for more of a um, all natural organic thing. So a filling of your choice is going to be necessary. Uh, as I said, I am going to be embroidering this goddess at the end. And so uh, you're going to want probably some scraps of like fingering weight yarn, which you could use to embroider designs and, and pictures and images onto your uh, goddess. Um, or you can leave it untouched. I, really, the possibilities and the options are completely up to you. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get started. Um, I will let you know which yarn I am using. This is some leftover yarn from a sweater that I made for my husband. It's just a simple Cascade 220 Heathers. I don't remember the name of it. Uh, the ball band has since long disappeared despite my best efforts to keep it together with it. Um, and uh, I think it was, I mean, it was just a number. I'm sure the actual name on the Cascade website was something simple like Forest Green Heather. Cascade is not exactly imaginative with their names. So um, that is what I am using, uh, some leftover yarn. And um, yeah, without any further ado, let's get started, right, shall so we? The pattern begins by casting on 13 stitches. I'm 
going to use the two tail cast on method. Four. <laughs> three, four, five. All right. And we're going to, um, this is for deep ends, by the way, to put four, four, and five stitches. We're just going to make sure that none of these are um, twisted or anything like that. We don't want that. There we go. Everything looks good here. So for round one, we're just going to knit. So I'll show you how I like to join um, in when I'm working in the round for basically anything. If the first couple of stitches are knit, I actually use the tail yarn to knit the first stitch through the back of the loop. And then I bring the tail yarn in between the first two stitches. And then I grab my working yarn and I knit the rest of the stitches. So some people, even when they're working DPNs or magic loop technique, like to place a marker at the beginning of their round. I do not. Um, I leave my tail yarn hanging down and I can clearly see where the beginning of my row is. Um, I feel like it just gets a bit redundant um, having a marker that keeps trying to slip off the end of my um, off the end of my needles anyways. Doesn't seem very um, very effective I guess. Alright. So when I get to the second round I need, so the, the instructions for the second round are to knit one and then knit one front and back. But first what I'm going to do is knit one, pull my tail tight, and then bring the yarn back through in between the stitches and leave it back there. And then I'm going to pull my working yarn and knit front and back holding the tail yarn out to the back so basically I've now trapped my tail yarn behind the other two stitches I know it's kind of hard to see from here but the uh, tail yarn is now trapped underneath and behind that that new stitch and this allows for you to not have to um, uh, have to figure out how to weave your tail yarn kind of in and out uh, later to get the um, to kind of you know keep it hidden it, it's just it's very easy now to keep it hidden so then I'm gonna follow the rest of the second round which is to knit one front and back and knit two twice so for those first two needles with the four stitches and then to knit two, one and two, knit one front and back, and then knit two. So this is for the head and neck that we are starting on first, okay? And then um, it will go down to the torso. So I'm going to follow the rest of the head and neck instructions, and then I will check back with you in there, and I will show you my Okay, guys, progress. I have finished up to round 17, which marks the end of the head. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to weave my end in. So I'm going to turn the head inside out, and I'm going to take my darning needle and thread it. And what I'm going to do, um, I'm actually, am I going to do this right side out first? Yes, I am. So I'm going to take this right side out first, actually. Sorry. 
and I'm going to, sorry, thread my needle through as many of these stitches as possible and pull it tight along the way. I want to close the hole at the top. I want to try to do this as neatly as I can. Which can be a little bit tricky, but just do the best job of your personal abilities. There we go. So as you can see, I'll put my finger in there. I've made this hole at the top basically as tight as can be. And now I'm going to stick my needle down into the head, turn it inside out, pull my needle through, and now I am going to weave my end in. You are going to want to stuff this uh, goddess as you go, um, as far as the head and the torso and things are concerned. Um, but I'm going to wait till I'm partially down the torso before I start to stuff the head, um, because it can be a little bit ungainly the first um, couple of rows after you do some stuffing. It can feel a little bit tight, a little bit um, just awkward really. And so um, I do like to try to leave some of the stuffing for as, as long as possible if I can. All right, so I think that's good for weaving in the end. Snip that. All right. So now we're going to turn this right, oh, oh, I dropped a stitch. That's okay. Can pick that up again. Kind of awkwardly, but there it is. All right, there we go. No harm done, all my stitches are there. So I have 13 stitches left on the needles again, or at least I should. Oh, that's what happened. That last stitch when it popped off, that was the stitch for that needle. There we go. At this point, you may wish to um, put a uh, um, one of those safety pin removable stitch markers near where your uh, round is um, into the fabric of it. Um, I think I will probably do that after I uh, finish a couple of rows on camera here for you. So I am going to grab my needle. So I'm now on row 18. So I'm going to knit one, knit one front and back, and then knit to end of needle. Then on needle two, I'm going to knit until two stitches remain on the needle. So in this case, that's knit two stitches. Knit one front and back. And then knit one. And then on the third needle, I'm going to knit one, knit one front and back. Then I'm going to knit until two stitches remain. So that's one stitch. Um, knit one front and back. And knit one. And it says I should have 17 stitches. Five, five, so 10, and 12, 14, 16, 17. Yes, I do. Round 19 is just to knit all stitches. So I'll do that. Three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, oops, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen. All right, so I am going to continue to knit uh, the torso as instructed. I'm probably going to do another couple of rounds on the needles um, as instructed, and then I will stuff the head. Um, so yeah, you can possibly do some embroidery on this as you go, it's particularly if you figured you really need to be able to get your finger in there to do it properly. Um, but I managed to do all my embroidery on the first one after it was all knitted and stuffed and my ends were woven in. So I don't think it would be a all problem. All right, so, so I have finished up to round 31, which is the end of the... Um, the main increasing for the goddess's breasts, which by the way happens on uh, needle three. You can kind of see when I poke my fingers in how they begin to come to a point. Uh, the other two needles um, across make up the back. At the end of row 31 is actually when the designer tells you to stuff the head. And um, then after it's stuffed to use the cast on tail to sew the top of the head closed gathering the stitches tightly and weaving in the end. Um, I'm not sure how you would do that if it's already stuffed. So that is why I did it when I did. Um, I felt like it was a more timely time to stuff it. But I have some uh, eco fill. I got this from Fabricland years ago. It literally says um, eco fill luxury fiber fill. All it is is recycled polyester fiber. Um, it was $10 for this gigantic bag, and I still have a lot. <laughs> um, I am going to use herbs in this later. It does say that if you want to use herbs to stuff a small pouch um, and then stuff it in there, um, that's because obviously, you know, you're, you're creating a... Um, you know, you're stuffing a knitted object out of worsted weight yarn. So you're going to, even if you're knitting quite densely, you are going to have some small holes and little bits of herbs to be able to fall out quite easily. Um, so I would recommend either stuffing your herbs into some, uh, like some muslin or a cotton bag, or um, like even an organza bag or something, something that won't allow all those little bits to come through. Um, but I'm going to use Ecofill. I like to stuff the bottom of the goddess, her um, her bottom area there. That's where I like to put the herbs in. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just, I've stuffed the head and I've stuffed a little bit of the neck there. And I'm going to leave it at that for now. Um, you can play around with the stuffing later. You can really use your fingers and manipulate the stuffing into places where you really want it to stay and then you can kind of squeeze it and shape it. But I like to do some of that um, a little bit later after I go on. So yeah, that is uh, the head for now. I'm going to carry on with some more of the torso. And again, I will check back with you in a little bit, but that's, that's the progress that I have made so far.
Alright, so uh, torso is now finished. I have just finished row 40 and redistributed the stitches and I have stuffed the goddess's breasts. She is voluptuous. I like it. Alright, we're going to move on to the next row which is row 41 and that is the lower body. I um, am just about finished with uh, the first part of the torso. I have, um, or sorry, the first part of the, uh, the body. I have finished with the increasing and I'm going to be uh, knitting three rows uh, even to kind of keep it in the fullness before you start to uh, decrease for um, the, the rounded and pointed bottom. So I just wanted to make a little note. Um, the uh, designer suggested if you want to get some like well-defined uh, breast shapes on your goddess, you can just take little uh, balls of yarn, like scrap yarn, and wind them up and make them into little balls and stuff them in and then quickly stuff some uh, tightly packed stuffing in behind them and it'll hold them in place. Um, I didn't do it with this goddess. Um, and as you can see, her breasts, if you push them down they do flatten out. Um, you can kind of manipulate the stuffing a bit if you want to to get them um, back into that kind of shape but they don't hold it very well. This on the other hand does seem to give it a better um, shape so um, yeah I'm, I think if I ever make one of these again after today um, I think I would probably do this trick again. So I have finished to row 63, so I'm down to 31 stitches around. Uh, the last um, few rows, it looks like about six rows or so, I'm going to get back down to my original number of 13 stitches, at which point I will cast off and I will um, uh, finish stuffing and then I will close it up um, and then begin uh, working on the tube for the arms. So um, before we go any further, I am going to stuff my goddess with some herbs. I am going to add a crystal in here. I'm going to add a moss agate, which I just haven't pulled out yet. All right, so I have an organza bag here, and I have um, a uh, mixture of herbs, which I'm not going to grind overly, but there's just some big chunks with um, some of the resins that I have in here, and I just kind of wanted to break some of those big chunks up just so that it's um, it's not going to feel like little pebbles are inside my goddess. It also helps to release some of the fragrance from it as well, which, you know, continued squeezing of the goddess may release a little bit more over time as well. So you just kind of want to... I'm not even, like, banging it. I'm more letting the weight of the mortar and pestle do the work for me. If that makes sense, I just, I'm just i moving it up and down a little bit. With a lot of these resins, you don't really have to put much effort into crushing them up. You know, there's a couple of big chunks that I will grind a little bit more actively, but for the most part, you just let the weight of the, of the pestle do the work. All right. That is that. Put that aside. And then, okay, these are my magical uh, measuring spoons. I was given this beautiful set with these dragonflies on them and flowers and things uh, a few years ago. There's some gardening images on here. Um, these were given to me by my grandmother a few years ago and I instantly knew that they had to be used in my magical practice because they're just too beautiful to use in the kitchen. So this is what I use when I'm measuring out herbs, resins and other things like that. And I am getting resin powder which is coming through the holes of the organza bag um, onto my pants. I'm not really worried about that. These have to hit the wash later anyways and um, I'm going to uh, you know, uh, most of the powder will end up going into the eco fill, into the, the polyester fiber fill when this is done. Just gonna put that aside. Great, I'm gonna close it up just away from my <laughs> pants. Look at the mess there. Brushes off pretty neatly though, doesn't take much effort. And then 
before this gets everywhere, it's going to go in to, oh, the crystal. I almost forgot about that. Let me open up that bag first and I will grab that crystal. All right, one moss agate. This one I chose because it's very textured and pitted. Even though it's been polished, it's quite rough to the touch. So I don't end up using this one like under my pillow. I just, I find the texture distracting. So there it goes into the bag. Close it up. Um, if you want, you can tie the little strings closed and you can say a little rhyme or a prayer while you close it. Um, I like to knot the strings three times because uh, three is a number sacred to the goddess. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bunch of my Ecofill and we're going to put it around the bag down each of the three sides because what you want to do is you want to kind of encase this um, organza bag or whatever type of pouch you end up using in your regular stuffing. Um, it kind of disguises the shape and the texture of the pouch which can often be quite uneven. And yeah not the not the greatest texture and feeling so really want to kind of push everything in and move it around and see how it feels are there any spots that feel rougher or that feel like they need more filling there we go right here needs a little bit more as well Make sure you pull your working out your working yarn out from time to time, otherwise it can get encased in the fill. <laughs> and I'm going to finish uh, with the uh, body here, and then I'm going to cast on for the arms. It's basically a tube, and then um, basically when I'm with you next. The body will be finished, the uh, end will be sewn in, and then the uh, uh, arm uh, tube will be knitted and we will show you um, putting it on and putting it together. So I have my arm tube knitted and now we're going to start to stuff some stuffing in it. Um, just in case you uh, are planning to knit this I do recommend um, leaving a bit of a tail on either end in order to make sure that you um, that you have enough to stitch the arms on with so as you can tell I'm just adding bits of the fill at a time Again, mind you, my cast on end is a little bit tighter, so I think I'm going to have to probably stuff it mostly from the cast off end. And I'm just using a bigger needle to kind of push, there we go, the stuffing down to the end. And then I'm going to kind of squish some of it in there. There we go. I recommend not overfilling the arms too much because I did notice with my first one that um, it looked fairly lumpy. So I would recommend just working in small bits and stuffing it down and kind of thinning it out a bit here and there and Yeah, just kind of playing with it and seeing how it goes. There we go. It's the first part of the arms stuffed there. 
And like I said, it is better to work in smaller bits because otherwise some of these pieces can start to look really fat really quickly. And then you can roll it between your hands to kind of um, push it down and, and squish it down to uh, make it a little bit more even, a bit more evenly distributed. Um, you can, of course, also stuff the arms as you go, but I find, um, especially when I was making the first ones, because I said I made three of them in a day, um, I did find that uh, on the one goddess where I was stuffing her arms as I knit, um, it was, uh, it, 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 I, I had a tendency to overstuff is what I'm trying to say. I definitely had a tendency to overstuff. And that didn't look the greatest. And you can kind of roll up and then like kind of shift it upwards as you go or downwards if you're trying to, uh, uh, you know, manipulate the stuffing into slightly different area. Kind of just a little bit at a time. I do recommend really taking your time and just keeping it nice and simple. And just playing with it, not being afraid to take your time with it. Okay. And that is that. There is my arm piece. And now we are going to sew it on our goddess. So I also like to recommend kind of taking a minute to really see where the arms should attach and how you kind of want to make it work, where you maybe want to start sewing, etc., etc. Just take a minute and try to judge appropriately. As I said, I recommend leaving a bit of a tail. And then I also recommend going with a slightly smaller and tapered um, darning needle. This one has a bend at the tip. There you go, you can see that against my jeans there. I recommend uh, having a bent tip because it allows you to get under both the uh, stitch and the fabric in the same motion. I'm just going to check again that this is where I want it to be. This is also a process that I recommend you taking a bit of time to do. Don't rush the placement of your arms. Really take a look and see from all angles where your arm is being placed before you do it. If you've never made a stuffed toy or a knitted object before that's been stuffed and, and has to have pieces sewn together, you should know that it is, um, I don't want to say a bit of an art form, but it is a bit finicky. And it is really easy to mess up if you rush the process. And now I have done some of this before. So it may look like I am going through this fairly quickly, but please know I have made a few stuffies uh, knit-wise in my time. I made a stuffed elephant for my son Andrew when I was still pregnant with him. And um, I've made a stuffed robin with a nest and eggs. That was super cute. And I'm trying to think what else I've made. Oh, I've made a sock monkey. Alrighty. So you 
down here. All right. And then now I'm just trying to kind of clean this up a bit. Really trying to take into account how this will be seen on all sides. So like, for instance, there's this bit of a bump here where um, the uh, cast off edges, whoops, came off my needle. So I'm go um, I stitched through the arm there, which is um, a really neat thing that you can do. And then going to take this bump part and push it in. This is something else that you might be able to use your bigger knitting needle to do. Just kind of manipulate it to the place where you want it. And stitch down into that. And that covered it up. No more cast on bump there. When you like what you have done, pull your needle in and then as much in there as you can get it, pull, okay? Stitch through, give it a little tug so that there is some gathering. You can remove your needle. Snip close to remove your end and then pull and your end has now disappeared into your goddess's arm and it that eco fill that stuffing will help to keep it in place now it's a matter of trying to get an even placement of the arm on the other side and this can be tricky it's one thing to stitch the first side. It's another to get the placement right of the second. So this is when I definitely recommend taking a look at your arm from all angles and then figuring out where your starting place is and trying to get down as evenly into that place as possible. Okay, I think that's right. Now that your first stitch is tacked down, you can really look at it from all angles and you can see, is this going to be even? And I think that looks good. So then I can go into my next stitch. Yes, this is fiddly business. If you were hoping that stitching the arms on was going to be no big deal, be warned, it is fiddlier than it looks at the beginning. It really is. I feel like stitching stuffed pieces on is um, really just an exercise in patience. Now we haven't spoken much about um, the magical uh, implications of making this goddess. Um, and I'd kind of like to just touch on that briefly here while I'm sewing this arm on. So as I mentioned earlier, I did make three of these goddesses before when I made them the first time. And the reason that I made three was because I was making one for each of my daughters and then also myself. Um, I made it for my girls as sort of a um, good sleep slash self-love charm. And, um, you know, Emily was very young when I made that for her. 
And um, I feel like hers still really applies today. Um, I thought about making another one for my older daughter, Morgan, but she is like so not interested <laughs> in um, any of the witchy stuff that I am doing right now. She's, uh, she's made it clear that she doesn't really care much about it right now, which is fine. Um, so, you know, if she does start to change her mind about this stuff later, um, I will make her another one. You know, she's changed a lot as a person in the last few years. She went from being kind of a preteen and, and wanting to be in the teenage world to really being in the teenage world. You know, she's a, a menstruating girl now and things have just changed. Um... So uh, this particular goddess I am making for myself um, as a earth goddess, a chance to uh, use it to connect with um, earthly energies and ground myself and things that are just a little bit more um, tangible and, and stuff like that. Hence why I put in like a tree agate and a lot of the herbs that I chose. Um, and uh, this first one that I made, which you can see I did not do nearly as good of a job as um, making the stitching of the arms um, less visible and, and things like that. Um, this for me was far more about self-love. So there's a rose quartz in here. There's this yarn that I use for embroidery that um, is a mixture of like a very soft rosy color and then, you know, kind of fades into like a lavender color and then goes back into the pink and things like that. Um, so I uh, I really, this one I want to do much more natural colors, and I want to make it more earthy in the symbols that I decorate it with. Um, you can use whatever uh, embroidery techniques you prefer, and I'm going to be doing, I forget what this one is called, but I think it's called like a braided stitch or something like that. Hello, Emily. And um, I'm going to use something um, very similar like this um, to do my embroidery on. I think I'm going to do some, uh, okay. I think I'm going to do some uh, like leaf symbols, maybe some flowers or something. So yeah, um, when I check back with you next, the embroidery on this should be finished. Um, I'm not going to show me doing that here on camera um, because I have very little time left on my SD card and also it takes me forever to place my embroidery. So uh, when we check back, this will be a finished goddess. Uh, there are tons and tons and tons of YouTube tutorials. I will link below the um, embroidery tutorial that I end up using um, for this because I need to refresh myself. I, I am not good at embroidery and I will need a heavy refresher um, before I would be comfortable uh, putting it on my goddess. So um, I will link any tutorials that I use below for your own viewing pleasure. So we'll check back soon. Well here she is you guys. There's some green embroidery down the side and onto the back. Uh, some white embroidery here and then I gave her a flower at the top of her head to kind of symbolize the connection to the earth and a rising up and bursting forth out of the crown chakra, if you will. Um, I've really enjoyed making this particular goddess and uh, she's going to get a little um, blessing on my altar, a little ritual of her own, and maybe not necessarily ritual, but just a, a ritual welcoming, I guess you would say. And um, I'm going to kind of uh, waken her up a little bit um, and uh, use it for some uh, earth magic and some personal healing and things like that. I guess you could say it's kind of a... Um, uh, kind of like a poppet, but not exactly like a poppet but yeah anyways um i hope you guys have enjoyed this video and if you have then make sure you thumbs up and subscribe so that we can uh so that you can uh, be uh, 
uh, notified whenever I upload another Witchcrafty Wednesday video. Until next time, guys, take care and blessed be.